my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feeling great. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast. I'm your co-host, Dr. Mike Akinfora. Today, I have with me Dr. Rita Marie Lascalzo. She is passionately committed to transforming our broken disease care system into a true health care system where each and every practitioner is skilled at finding the root cause of health challenges and using ancient healing wisdom married with modern scientific research to restore balance. As the founder of the Institute of Nutritional Endocrinology, Dr. Rita Marie specializes in using the wisdom of nature to restore balance to hormones with a special emphasis on thyroid, adrenal, and insulin imbalances. Her practitioner training programs empower health and nutrition practitioners to get to the root cause by using functional assessments and natural therapeutics to balance the endocrine system, which is the master controller. Dr. Rita Marie is a licensed doctor of chiropractic with certifications in acupuncture, nutrition, herbal medicine, and heart math. She's also a certified living foods chef, instructor, and coach, and she has trained and certified hundreds of others in the art of using palate-pleasing whole fresh food as medicine. A best-selling author, speaker, and internationally recognized nutrition and women's health authority with over 23 years of clinical experience, Dr. Rita Marie offers online courses, long-distance coaching and counseling, and deeply empowering and informative live events. Her widely popular practitioner certification program empowers health and wellness professionals to unravel the mystery of their clients' complex health challenges so that they become known as the go-to practitioners for true healing and lasting results. Dr. Rita, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Mike, for being allowing me to be here. I think that's awesome what you're doing and all the people you're reaching with this wonderful program. So thank you. Thank you so much. So tell me about your journey. How did you get started in all this? Um, huh. It was, uh, as I, I coin it, it, I went from health crisis to health coaching. Basically, I, um, I found myself in my 20s uh, dealing with all kinds of just what I now know of as lifestyle-induced illnesses but didn't at the time, and I was having headaches and I was having brain fog and stomach problems and sinus problems and all this stuff, and I just kept going from doctor to doctor to try to find solutions, and all I kept getting was try this medication, try these steroids, let's cut out your sinus, uh, you know, freeze out your sinus membranes, and here's some ulcer medication, and I went through this whole series of stuff for quite a while, and I was getting frustrated, and I finally, when it was the ulcer's turn to be dealing with, and I was ruled out that I didn't have an ulcer, and I just was like, but what do I have, and they said, we don't know, but just keep taking the ulcer medication and you'll be fine. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I'm 24 years old. I'm going to take ulcer medication for the rest of my life. And so I said to him, I said, well, can it be my diet? Because I figured it's the stomach, right? The food goes through there and my diet is pretty bad and maybe something I'm eating. Oh, no, 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 no. Diet doesn't have anything to do with it. But I didn't really have much else except I'm 24. I'm going to be on this medication for the rest of my life. This is ludicrous. So I just started researching and went to the good old-fashioned public library, which I don't know that very many people go there to do research anymore, right? Because you just don't, you just pop open your browser and you do some searches and you find everything you need. But I went to the library, started reading books, and I said, well, you know, maybe this is the diet. And I started shifting and changing and experimenting, and I'd have ups and downs, and I could see the progress was getting better, but I really didn't know what I was doing. And there wasn't an internet to go to and there weren't 27,000 different holistic and functional medicine practitioners putting up their shingles online at that point. So I was very fortunate to find someone who was a Russian doctor in New Jersey because that's where I was living at the time. And, um, she started pointing me the direction of food allergies and candida and cleansing and all this stuff. And, you know, through a whole series of interventions and trial and error, et cetera, I got to the point where I not only regained my health, but I felt better than I'd ever felt in my life, more energy, more clarity. And I said, you know what? something's got to change here in this medical system that I had to spend the last two years searching around for to learn how to live my life, how to eat, how to breathe, how to think 
And so I decided to leave my very illustrious job as a computer programmer back then. I was making very good money because that's before outsourcing to India started. So computer programmers here in the U.S., especially with master's degrees, were doing really well. And I said, nope, I'm going to start a new career. And I left. And what I decided to do is go to chiropractic school. I was in chiropractic school. And I did my master's in nutrition, a remote program through the University of Bridgeport, at the same time. (laughs) And you, having been through chiropractic school, know that if you try to do anything at the same time, that it's kind of a prescription for for disaster. But it wasn't. I was so dedicated. And I ended up graduating back in 1992. Two, I think, with both degrees, with my master's in nutrition and my doctor of chiropractic. And, of course, went on my way to go, wow, you know, that that kind of idealistic. I'm just going to hang up my shingle and people are going to come and they're all going to get better and everything's going to be hunky-dory. And it just took a little while of getting people, you know, to understand that nutrition was important and to understand that some of their chronic back pain or neck pain that they were coming to me for that wasn't being addressed by simply adjustments or massage or whatever else they'd done, that it could have a nutritional component. So over the years, I just got known for getting results with people, and people started coming not just for their back pains and their headaches and things like that, but for everything. And over time, I just realized that, you know, this was my passion and my calling. And when the Internet, you know, when it became more accessible, I don't remember when it was when I first jumped online, it was back in 2008, I decided, well, I'm going to start trying to reach people over the Internet and do group programs and educate people. And fast forward to today, I have, you know, a gazillion different online programs which help people with all sorts of, of ailments and, you know, getting balance. It's restoring balance and how to eat right for their digestion, for their hormones. And also now I train practitioners who want to get into this field, people who are tired of not getting people well. And, you know, so I get help, uh, nurses and nutritionists and MDs and uh, DOs and physicians assistants. And I think we even have one chiropractor in there, nutrition, acupuncturists, everybody. So we have this whole group of practitioners that are, we're all like, we want to provide root cause health care and we want to change the system. And so that's where I am today Already? in a nutshell. That is, that's an amazing story. <laughs> <laughs> that is really cool stuff. Um, let me ask you a question. Uh, let's dive into this. Um, what is keeping people from being as healthy as they possibly can? Mm. But there's a number of factors, but a big one, and this is going to sound bizarre, but a big one is believing that they can't be believing that they, um, that what they think and what they eat and how they live their life doesn't really have anything to do with their health. Mm. It just has to do with, like, it's just their luck, right? They just got became a victim of this, and when they get sick, they go to the doctor, and the doctor will heal them and cure them. And that's a big part of why people don't aren't as healthy as they can be because they don't believe they can be because they just go to the doctor, and, and really Western medicine doesn't provide – root cause solutions, it provides some decent band-aids, which we really want when we have broken bones and trauma, you know, and life-threatening infectious diseases. But for the chronic, what I call the walking wounded, there's not a lot of solution there. So I think I think once people get fed up with like, this isn't really helping. Like I'm, I've been on this medication for 15 years and I'm still exhausted and the doctor wants me to put me on Prozac because they think it's all in my head. Like maybe there's another solution like I did. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for me, I was only 24 at the time instead of, you know, 50. And I think that people are the, the, the lifestyle, the choices that we make every moment impact our health. And you know that, right? We've been teaching that forever. So it's every day we make choices, but people aren't empowered to make the right choices because they've, kind of been brainwashed to think that well their choices don't have anything to do with their health so they and and it's getting better right now i mean we're getting to have more awareness but the truth of the matter is like people don't think about it when they eat they don't think about it when they turn the news on first thing in the morning and they're being inundated with all this this sympathetic rush of like ah everything death and and fear factors mm-hmm. first thing in the morning and they wonder why they're not having a good day so i believe that when people are empowered and they know how their choices affect their life how they affect their health wow i mean we start to make these amazing choices and i see people get well so quickly when they start to feel empowered absolutely i uh, we see that every day in our office 
our mission for our company, the Center for Epigenetic Expression, is to educate, empower, and inspire our community. Perfect. And and that is exactly what we're talking about and trying to get people to understand. And I don't think there's ever been a better time in the history of mankind for us to experience that. Yeah, absolutely. So why do you think there's so much conflicting health information out there? You know why I think there's so much conflicting information? Because that there's biochemical individuality, that everybody's unique in their genes, in their past experiences, and there's no one-size-fits-all. And so this expert has found like maybe his population or her population is a certain category of people and the majority of them get well with this particular approach. And then another and maybe a different population has a different set of experiences. But but really, I don't believe there's one perfect diet. There's no perfect exercise program. There's no perfect amount of sleep even for everybody. And so I think that what we need to do is look at each person individually and take all the, there's good in a lot of things. There's a lot of stuff that everybody agrees on, right? That we shouldn't eat crap. <laughs> Basically, we shouldn't eat sugar and, and hydrogenated oils and, you know, processed foods and pesticides may not be good for us. There's a lot of things that most experts will agree on. Mm -hmm. But then there's the, oh, the high fat diet, the low fat diet, the paleo diet, the vegan diet. And, and the truth of the matter is they can all work. For the right individual. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's amazing. We will um, we'll do 30-day challenges in our office, and we measure some of the um, data points, such as their stress level, uh, their inflammation levels, and their um, tension levels, muscle tension levels. And we can see in 30 days uh, just changing their diet from a standard American diet to a real food diet. Real food. Yeah. And their their markers are just brilliant in 30 days. Yep. And that's all yep. we tell people is give us 30 days. Let's see where you are. The worst thing that's going to happen is nothing. Yep. And it generally doesn't. And when nothing happens then, what you know is, oh, well, there's something else going on here. We just have to do some further tests to really identify. And it might be a specific genetic thing that just needs a specific set of nutrients that the average person doesn't need. And they need to have some supplementation there or, or specific avoidance, you know, or looking at the environment and looking at what toxicity they're exposed to that maybe genetically they can't really handle. And so most people, you're right, and I do 30-day challenges. I do seven-day challenges. Sure. And we see phenomenal results in seven days. So my wife and I just saw Deepak Chopra last week, and what he said, which is now catching on, he said 95% of all disease is caused by lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. Yep. And this is something that's completely different than what we've been told, uh, what I was told growing up, and I'm sure for yourself, what you were right. told growing up. Yeah, so we're, absolutely. So we're starting to see a change in how this information is presented, and that's the empowering part for yes. people. Yes. You know, I, yes. I'm actually a really good example of it because as a former athlete, I continue to eat like I was an athlete and working <laughs> out, but I was not. And at one point I was up to 300 pounds. <gasps> oh, my. So when I went to see my friend uh, who is an MD, he said, well, your triglycerides are through your roof, your blood pressure, your um, cholesterol, your blood sugar. He goes, if you were, uh, you know, a, a normal person, I would just put you on insulin. I'd put you on blood pressure meds. He goes, but I know you're not going to want to take it. So he goes, let's look at diet and exercise. And from there, I've lost over 100 pounds. Great. So it's, it is truly, and, and that's empowering. Yeah, that that you have the ability to take control of your own life. Yep, so, we all do. And, and you know what you just said was that um, the, the, the thing about it is a lot of people don't realize that because they're like their control has been taken away. You go to the doctor, you go to the experts, etc. But the the thing is that when people when you give people like, oh, you have a choice, people take it as, oh, I'm to blame. 
Yes. And so it's really important how we really phrase it so that it's empowering instead of feeling like, well, it's not my fault I'm sick. No, I didn't choose this. Right. right. And, and then, then that shuts it down. And then that person is not going to be willing to make the changes. Yeah, absolutely. And it's amazing to see how just what you said, just that little change in how it's presented makes yeah. all the difference in the world. Yep. So how does everyday stress affect our health? Mm. (laughs) Wow. That's the thing. Like the, the, we have these adrenal glands that are intended to protect us from danger and from tigers that chase us. And in the olden days, our everyday stressors were uh, every now and then you'd run into a tiger, you'd run away, you'd climb a tree, you'd get out of the way, and then you'd go back to picking berries. And that's not what happens today. Our everyday tigers are not real physical dangers. There are things like, you know, the the economy and and being able to actually see what's happening. Every natural disaster that happens in every part of the globe, we get privy to. Mm -hmm. And that's overwhelming for our nervous systems. It's completely overwhelming. We're not designed to handle everybody in the world's problems. But because of all the interconnections with technology, we get that. And and people just sit there and they're like, mesmerized watching or listening to the news so there's constant stress but it's all either a psychological mental emotional stress Mm -hmm. or it's a a stress from the toxicity in the air and in the food and those aren't those are modern day stressors those aren't stressors that we adapted to you know in our early ancient ages so when we were running away from tigers our adrenals got in the way and they came in they said okay save you and raised our heart rate raised our blood pressure raised our blood sugar so we could get away from the tiger mm-hmm. But that same physiologic mechanism happens when you read about this natural disaster or the stock market crashes or, your, you know, a kid fails a test. And we go into that same response physiologically. So what do we get? Elevated blood sugar, elevated blood pressure, increased heart rate, and all the biochemical imbalances that happen that cause us to go to the doctor and they go, uh, you're a mess. And it all happens because of the the stress. And it's not that it's the outside. It's not that those events trigger it. It's how we adapt to it. Absolutely. So the stress can be dealt with, right? But we have to learn coping techniques that get us out of what's called the sympathetic nervous system, that fight, flight, run, hide, jump, to the, the, um, the parasympathetic, which is rest and digest and reproduce and heal. And when we can learn techniques to shift ourselves there and we can reduce the stressors like the environmental pollutants and the the toxins in the food and eating really good whole, like you said before, real food, we take away some of those stresses. And what happens? The diseases go away, right? We reverse things because we've reversed an underlying cause. And I think that the underlying cause of pretty much everything or most everything that we're encountering is stress. Is stress. I agree. So what are some of those things that we can do to support our our mind, our body from stress? Yeah. Yeah, so so first of all, there's some mental emotional things you can do and I love heart math. Yep. Um I don't Could know that explain? a lot of people yeah. are familiar. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a technique that was developed by a group out in in uh, California in, in the, like the Ben Lomond and uh, that area mm-hmm. by near Santa Cruz area of California. They have a really nice uh, plant where they they test and they test and they put people on these little heart rate variability monitors and they test their blood and and they test what the body's doing in response to stress mm-hmm. and then in response to relaxation and what they've come up with is a technique a process that I've been doing probably for the last 12 years that I absolutely adore that has completely changed me from being a stressed out you know adrenally fatigued um, type A person okay. to being able to just like Breathe, relax, let go of that stress mm-hmm. in the moment. And, and it's, it's an amazing technique composed of simple things that we all know how to do. Breathing and appreciation. I love it. I love it. Uh, I, one of the things that I do in, in our office is when we are doing an adjustment on a patient, I will ask them to think of something that you are grateful for. Yeah. And when they're in that moment of gratitude is when I deliver that adjustment. 
Mm. And I know that it is that much more powerful because they're opening their heart to what the universe has to offer. Love and, that. Yeah, it, it's really it, it's really neat way of looking at things. And um, yeah. I think we get even better results because of that. I can, I wouldn't doubt that at all. I mean, when they when they looked at when they measure people, they measure the heart rate variability, they measure blood sugars, they measure enzymes, immune factors, before and after doing this breathing appreciation piece. Mm-hmm. Th- dramatic shifts. I mean, blood pressure goes down, blood sugar goes down, and I've seen this with my own clients because one of my the things I do in my online programs, I have a blood sugar balancing online program, and I have people buy a little glucose meter, yep. and they test their blood glucose, and if they if they get stressed out, they see their blood sugar go up. And if they do some of these breathing and appreciation techniques, it drops. And they're able, people are able to control their blood sugar and within 10 minutes drop their blood sugar 50 points just by doing breathing and appreciation. I love it's that. It's quite amazing. I love that. Uh, in, in terms of support nutritionally and, and supplementally, are there certain things that you look at or you would recommend for somebody who's uh, very stressed? Yeah. So, you know, the, there's two ways to look at it, right? Okay. You've got to look at the root cause, which is your coping mechanism. Sure. So while you're working on that, there's all sorts of things you can do depending on what the imbalance is. Sure. So there's certain things like if somebody's in the hyper adrenal state where their adrenals are just working over overtime all the time and their high levels of cortisol and just raging through their system all the time. There's a lot of things that you can take to relax, to bring down. Mm -hmm. There's certain herbs called adaptogens like ashwagandha, rhodiola, holy basil, things like that, that are adaptogens that will help the body to just cope with the stress. And then there's some relaxing things like lemon balm and chamomile and other things like that that people can do uh, to help them calm down. So that's what they can do from a nutritional standpoint, but also some some nutrients as well because – when you're under that extreme stress, your adrenals are like eating up all your vitamin C, which is why people end up getting sick sure. when they've had a stressful event because they've eaten away all their vitamin C. They, they eat away their B vitamins, zinc, magnesium. So there's certain nutrients that can be, can be put back in. But also, you got to look at the food because we're stressing our bodies out three times a day When we eat the standard American diet, or seven or eight times a day, which is more typical of most people who eat between meals and snacks. And it's a stress on the body to be putting this food in that's been processed, that has chemicals added to it, that's devoid of nutrients. And when you eat food that's devoid of nutrients, your body scavenges for stores of nutrients in the body. And it may find it, but it's going to find it at the expense of those organs so or or the bones, wherever those nutrients might be stored. So it's super important to really nourish and think about each meal being this like this opportunity for you to rebalance your body and thinking about what does it need and eating lots of fresh whole foods and green leafy vegetables and I like sea vegetables and probiotic rich foods and things that have a lot of vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and omega-3 fats. and So getting that balance of food is super important to take the stress off the system, but also to replenish the nutrients that are depleted by the stress. Absolutely. You know, it's it's really interesting. One of the things that we teach um, when we're doing lectures is it doesn't matter where your people are from, wherever you were originated from in this world, they started at the shoreline. And they ate fish all the time because it was a heck of a lot easier to eat fish than it was to go kill a mastodon or a saber-toothed right. tiger. <laughs> no so kidding. we would eat fish all the time. And what we see today is that we very, very rarely eat fish. You know, we'll ask for a show of hands, like how many people eat fish two times a week? And we may get one out of 30 How many people eat it once a week? We may get five out of 30, but it's it's a really, really low number. And we know how healthy fish is and subsequently how healthy omega-3 oil is, but we're just not getting that. And that's, that's compounding that stress, isn't it? 
Well, yeah, and and the thing about though the fish, the thing is, it's not as healthy as we as it used to be because we've polluted our oceans. So it's it's a challenge to find fish that's not contaminated with mercury and PCBs and all these things. Sure. So you know, I I tend to push people towards the sea vegetables because you can't eat them every day without having all this extra mercury okay. because that that so it's it's kind of like eating lower on the food chain because the the, the uh, fish actually concentrate as they go up gotcha. the, the levels of that in there so i actually because that's something they can do daily and there's all kinds of ways you can sprinkle kelp into your smoothies or on your foods and salads and in salad dressings and you can make these amazing sea vegetable salads and eat sushi and that kind of thing or you know i do veggie sushi but but i think that there's a fear and even the government has put out there don't eat fish more than twice a week and once a week if you're pregnant and be careful because of the um the contamination so it's really hard our food supply has become quite contaminated Mm -hmm. and the higher you eat on the food chain the more contamination you get because you're concentrating the the, the uh, contaminants as you go up the food chain. So, you know, I, I think I don't necessarily encourage people to eat fish. I certainly would re- prefer them to eat fish than to eat uh, hamburgers and, and uh, the, the variety of processed meats. But on the other hand, where, where people are really falling short, I think, is on the, the abundance of vegetables that we just don't get. Like in the olden days, you know, you'd eat lots of vegetables because you'd go out and you'd pick them and they were fresh. And now people eat this little, you know, I think half dollar size portion of vegetable on their plate. And really, I think that 75 percent of that plate should have all those green, leafy, colorful, all the different vegetables. Sure. And then the other 25 percent can be the fish or the, the the grain or the beans or whatever other, you know, depending on your food preferences. Sure. So I think that that's a piece that is really missing and that's really stressful for people. I agree 100 percent. You know, when we look at when we look at our dinner plate, I, I believe that, like you said, 75 percent of that plate should be full of vegetables yep. and, and a 25 percent that that protein source of some kind. Dr. Rita Marie, can you give people a couple examples of what sea vegetables are? Oh, sure. Yeah. So there's a lot of them. There's actually, you know, so many of them. It's like you've got spinach and kale and all these other land greens. Well, you've got so many in the sea. People, a lot of times people know of nori, which it mm-hmm. comes in. It doesn't grow that way, but they they smash it into these sheets and you can roll it and they put sea, uh, fish and other rice and things like that in it. Well, that nori is actually good for a lot of different things. I make burritos out of it. I just put salad in it and eat it that way because it's I like it. I can get to eat my hand, my salad with my hand. Um, there's one called kelp. Yep. And a lot of people see these big, hard kelp things, but there's some really nice, thin, crispy kelps, and you can also get it as a powder. And so it's very high in iodine and other minerals. So you just sprinkle it. A little bit goes a long way. You don't need much. And it doesn't really change the flavor if you don't – so a lot of people don't like the fishy flavor. So it doesn't really change the flavor unless you're eating a, a boatload of it. And dulse is another one. It's like a purplish one, and it's very soft, and you can actually just eat it out of the bag. Or you could sprinkle it on your salads, or you can dry it in a dehydrator and make like crispy kind of chewy things. Sure. Um, yeah, there's uh, there's arame is one of my favorites. It looks like black spaghetti. Oh, you, it's yeah. dry yep. and you soak it. Oh, it's so good. And I, I've been I've been on a kick for arame this week and I've made it like three or four times. But I like to put a little bit of sesame oil and ginger on sure. it and then shred up a bunch of carrots and eat it with that. And it's oh, my God, it's so good. Awesome. So good. And I've probably missed a few, a hajiki, and there's a whole bunch of others. But but those are the main ones that we see. Sea palm, yep. they're, they're just lovely, and you can make them into salads on them on their own. But they usually mix them with other vegetables or make them into soups, put them in soups with a lot of veggies. Awesome. I love it. So our time has flown by. Um, yeah. I'd really like to have you back on the show. And can you tell people where they can find you? Sure, absolutely. Well, my main website is drritamarie.com. It's D-R-R-I-T-A-M-A-R-I-E, drritamarie.com. And if you're a practitioner and interested in looking into or or a want to be, you know, you're like really passionate about health and want to look into becoming a, a new health a uh, holistic health type of practitioner. It's nutritionalendocrinology.com. Awesome. And um, we we just have a lot of different items out there and just my if you sign up for my newsletter, we have a weekly newsletter with lots of information and lots of free and free signups and free 
videos and all sorts of things that you can really learn and dig in and get started on this. I love it. Thank you so much for being on the show. Um, we've just touched the surface of what you do, and I am uh, appreciative of you taking the time to share with our audience today. Absolutely. And, and I gave you a link if you want to share it with your audience yes. for a little booklet that we put together that's a hormone harmonizing elixirs. And it's kind of some fun beverages that you can have instead of coffee to give you energy. Awesome. So we will definitely have all those links in the show notes. And Great. I just want to, again, say thank you. Folks, if you like the show, please go to iTunes. You can subscribe and please leave a review. We greatly appreciate it. You can join the over 30,000 subscribers we have. And if you're interested in our first project, you can check it out at www.painreliefproject.com. And we appreciate you guys being such loyal listeners. And we'll see you next time. Ciao.